of Sadoff Extension Specialist at Purdue University. In this video, we will talk about sawflies. Sawflies are stingless wasps whose immature stages feed on a wide variety of plants. They get their name sawflies because of how they insert eggs into plant tissue with a saw-like device or ovipositor. Here you see an adult European pine sawfly laying an egg into a pine needle. Eggs hatch from semicircular scars into small worm-like larvae that strip the needles from pine trees. Sawflies, like this white pine sawfly, will superficially resemble caterpillars, the immature stages of moths and butterflies. It is important not to confuse sawflies and caterpillars because some of the insecticides that kill caterpillars will not harm sawflies. The simplest way to distinguish between a caterpillar and a sawfly larva is to compare their prolegs. Here you see a columbine sawfly holding onto a leaf with its true legs and its prolegs. Prolegs are bumps on the belly side of a larva, and they are used like legs to hold on to plant tissue. This photo has a green caterpillar on top and a white sawfly on the bottom. You can see the three pairs of true legs that are immediately to the left of the head of the caterpillar and the sawfly. The pro legs are further toward the hind end of both the caterpillar and the sawfly larvae. Caterpillars never have legs on the fifth segment down from the head. Sawflies do. Also, caterpillars have less than six prolegs, whereas sawflies have six or more. It's easy to remember this number because there are six letters in the word sawfly. Sawfly larvae feed on a wide variety of plants and come in a wide variety of colors. Dogwood sawflies are covered with white wax and can be a serious defoliator of red twig dogwoods. Slug sawfly larvae are covered with a sticky secretion like the pear slug sawfly that you see here. Oak slug sawflies often feed in groups, scraping off all but the top surface of a leaf. Roses are particularly susceptible to several species of sawfly. Their injury is quite distinctive and common in the landscape. Young larvae are unable to feed all the way through leaves and will scrape off all but the uppermost layer of the leaf tissue, leaving behind a gray window. As sawflies get larger, they can feed all the way through the leaves. You can confirm your diagnosis or look up control tactics on the Purdue Plant Doctor webpage available at purdueplantdoctor.com. Simply type the word sawfly and select the particular sawfly that you have information about, or type the name of the plant, let's say rose, and select uh, the rose from, from the drop down list, and uh, click on the bar of leaves to look for images of damaged leaves that would match what you think might be sawfly. Here we see an image of sawflies on the right. You can get a quick click to get a high resolution photo, close that up, or just click on the image. And there you can get information about key features, uh, such as the membranous windows, review the symptoms, the biology, and get some management recommendations. Then you could take this list of effective pesticides with you to the store to see if they have what we recommend on the shelf. Note that despite their showy blooms, many of the hybrid roses with double petals have fewer pollen and nectar rewards to make them attractive to bees. For this reason, using foliar applied insecticides to kill sawflies will be less harmful to pollinators than plants considered to be bee magnets. Notice the look-alike section over here. Uh, we have uh, Japanese beetles, because Japanese beetles' injury on roses can be confused with a sawfly injury, but notice that the, the skeletonization 
caused by Japanese beetles is a lot more extensive than the skeletonization caused by the rose sawfly, and there are no windows. So please be sure to visit our Plant Doctor webpage, and don't let your plant problems get you down.